Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Gareth Davis. It's Monday, uh, April the 27th, I think it is. Um, it's uh, a chat this afternoon with Britain's Roberto Duran, as I call him. Um, it's Robert Smith, the General Secretary of the Boxing Board of Control. It's about four weeks since we spoke, Robert. You called off boxing in April. You called off boxing in May. The right decision, in my view. Um, I know you're busy working behind the scenes and everybody wants to know when boxing is going to come back. Where are we at the moment with it? Well, we'll be reviewing it in May with regard to June. I mean, I was a couple of, months, well, a couple of weeks ago thinking that we maybe get going in the middle of June to the end of June. Um, we've got a lot of things taking place with regard to discussions with the doctors, etc., and also government officials. If that goes into J July, so be it. But we're hopeful we can get something going as soon as we possibly can. We're well aware that we need to get boxing back on, back on board. Um, how that happens, we're not too sure yet. It's more than likely we'll be behind closed doors, um, but we're just keen to get things moving. So, uh, but things are changing every day, Gareth, you know, as well as I do. And really, we're, we're at the mercy of what the government um, uh, decide, and quite, and quite rightly so. Um, and we'll just take our advice from them once they've decided where we move and if the lockdown is lifted what restrictions we have in place we'll work around those restrictions to see if we can run a boxing show and if we can we will so march april may middle of june how many shows in your mind do you estimate we will have lost in that time in britain well, i think we'll have lost 60 60 like that if you I mean, we're talking you're talking march april may is very busy time and was it last year or the year before we had in march we had 15 shows over a period of a weekend um mm. so if we're on the same scale as the last as last year and, and it looked like we were i mean we i think we had march had something like 29 30 shows booked we obviously stopped boxing on the 17th of march so we're halfway through it so we lost half those shows um april we would have had similar um, and May would have been similar because you're leading into the summer period. Um, uh, so obviously we're quite busy going into June, July. Um, lot, so we'll be hit quite bad. A lot, of, um, a lot of people out there within the industry saying that fight sports might be one of the last to come back because there are seasons with a lot of the other sports that they need to just complete. Whereas we... We're, we're a kind of, we're, our algorithm is quite random, isn't it? It doesn't, yeah. nothing needs to take place before certain times. So do you think we may be one of the last sports to come back? I think there's a possibility, but I don't think it's just because of that. I think um, the main reason, you said, we don't, we don't have a season. As, well, we used to have a season when I was boxing many years ago, but it's not a season anymore. Uh, but we don't have a fixture list as such, um, with cup finals and whatever going to take place and somebody's got to win a league. We don't have that. So you can, we've got a bit more leeway with regard to that. Um, but of course, our major issues is the medical issues and getting them in place before we can actually start running a show. Now, if we're a little bit later than the other sports because of that, then so be it. But we've got to make sure we get it done right. I don't think we'll be too much later. Um, we are working very hard to make sure that when we are given the all clear, we can go. The other thing is if you compare us to football or rugby, etc., and cricket, you know, they have their own training facilities. These people can go to, the, go to their clubs. They obviously uh, train as, as we're instructed to train, but not next to somebody, etc. But in the boxing world, it's slightly different. There's different gyms all over the place. So, you know, you're not, not in one particular gym all the time. So it's different how we operate. I do think that once we are given the go-ahead and we, we have the restrictions in place that we can work with, um, but you've got, you're talking four or five weeks before the first show takes place anyway. People aren't training, they're not sparring. Depends what sort of shows you want. Um, we've got to consider whether we allow championships straight away, um, which we are considering. Um, main reason is numbers. We've got to limit the numbers of people taking, going to these events if we go the behind closed door route. So there's a lot of things to juggle around, a lot of logistics and whatever. So really, we're just, we, we, we hope, we, we, and I'm confident, we'll have things ready to go once we're given the all clear. So presumably then, the logistics and the safety around all the logistics are the key. So do you have to test? It's going to be behind closed doors to begin with, presumably, yeah? So I would, I would say that I would say 95% at the present time, 
the first shows will be behind closed doors. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't hand on heart definite, but I think it looks very, very much like that. But again, it is down to the restrictions we have when the government let us know in May sometime what they're doing. So where do you think those behind closed doors will be? Will it be TV studios? Will you build something specific? Will it be used once a week? Will there be uh, a queue? Will it be promoters who've got TV deals? Who, how, how do you think that may work? Well, I think that the promoters who have TV deals, um, you know, we've done, tour, we've done fights uh, or contests um, behind closed doors before. Um, so, you know, I've been involved with one that I can remember many years ago, but it has happened. Um, so... What was that, Robert? Of, pardon? What was that one? But many years ago, if you remember Johnny, Johnny with shoes and used to work for yeah. uh, Barry Hearn, mm -hmm. and we put together, a, a, Barry had a contract with a Polish TV company. He needed to do, put something on. I think a show had been cancelled for some reason, and we went behind closed doors. I think it was in Elstree or something like that. I can't remember, but it was a long time ago. But we did it, and it worked. Um, and so it can be done. Uh, so How many think, people were there? How many people do you think there uh, were? It was, it, was, it was virtually, it was just a TV crew, board officials, etc. like that. There have been a few more other people um, knocking around, but not, nothing major. Um, so in principle, we did it. Um, you know, so, you know, you would think that the ideal location would be a TV studio. Um, but obviously, once we find out if that's going to be the case, we've got to go there and check everything's all right with regard to the facilities, uh, which I'm sure they will be OK, but we need to go and check it. Um, but you'd have thought that was the, the ideal place to do a show. Other than that, if, if a promoter wishes to build a purpose-built venue as such, then that's obviously something we have to be involved in with regard to the facilities there. And so be it. If that can happen, it will happen. And in your mind, um, yes or no? Everyone wearing masks apart from the boxers? I would, I would, well, not a doctor, but I would have thought that was a very strong possibility, yes. Ring card girls? No, I don't. I think, I think what we need to do, as I say, this is something for, the, for me to discuss with the promoters, etc. But I think we need to, if it is behind closed doors, we need to make sure we have the minimum amount of people there. Um, you know as well as I do. When you start racking up the numbers of people, board officials, uh, TV people, um, employees of the promoter etc these numbers start building up very very quickly and you're 50 60 before you know where you are maybe 100 before you know where we are so I think we all have to be very sensible and decide how who we're going to allow in also there's going to be restrictions with regard to individuals health and age limits you know the government are telling us everybody over 70 should be should, should be self-isolating so we have to consider that. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider. Certainly the health issues with regard to the people working in the tournament. If you have chest infections, if, you've been, if you have other medical conditions, then you, know, you shouldn't attend these events. So it's going to be, it's going to be testing, but I'm sure that we, you know, we have the will to do it and we want to do it. How do you go about, for example, like say, say you've got a card with five, five fights, 10 boxes. Do you allow one quarter man, just the trainer? But how do you go about testing everyone that's on your rotor for being COVID negative, if you like? Well, I think the first thing is we'll have to we'll find out who's boxing on the show and find out who's and, 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 and advise how many people they can have in the corner. If we go the one corner man route, um, then obviously we need to know who they are. They're all license holders with the board, so we have a record of who they are. We would make sure that they, if, if, they, if it is decided that everybody has to be tested, um, then we will make sure that they are tested, we get the results, and if you're negative, we are okay to carry on. Um, obviously, they maybe have to go into set provision where the, the promoter has to supply a hotel for four, five, six days or so to ice, ice, to, for these people to be isolated in that area, uh, and we take it from there. And if it's positive, you don't come. And, um, yeah. Of course, so that's, be the, that will be the same with all board officials, referees, timekeepers, and everybody like that. So... So it's a big, it's a big ask, um, and it will take a lot of work between us and the promoters. But, it, but if we really want to do it, it can be done. And, and rather like that event last weekend in Nicaragua, where you saw them, they sprayed the ring after every bout they, they, with disinfectant. It looked good. They sprayed the boxes down. Uh, they obviously, they, were, they, they, had a, they just sprayed them down. Um, does that, is that the kind of 
um, kind of futuristic scenario we may, may be seeing at our first few events if this goes ahead? I'm not a doctor, Gareth. I will have to take advice with regard to how those things work and if, they're, if, they're, if they are the right things to do. But if we have to do it, we will have to do it. It's as simple as that. If we want the shows to go ahead, mm. if the promoters want to promote if TV uh, and people want, want to get back boxing back on TV and these are the providers we have to put in place, we will put them in place. And, and I'm fairly sure that, you know, we've had, what we've done so far, we've notified all our license holders as we've gone along. Uh, we've notified the press as we've gone along. We haven't received very much criticism from anybody. I think everybody, vast majority of the people in the sport are very supportive of what we're trying to do. And I think we realise how serious this situation is. And we're just a side product at the present time. Imagine this. Someone gets cut during the bout, OK? You must have thought about this. Someone gets cut. Obviously, it's an open wound. Who knows what's around in the atmosphere? If someone's cut, are we going to have to end that fight? No, that's something we'll have to talk with the doctors. I mean, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I, don't know about that. I, I wouldn't like some making stipulations like that. Let's just speak to the experts and see how we get on. Is there, is there a pressing need to get back, though, so you can get more trinkets on your cabinet behind you so that... Um, no, is, is there more of a press, is there a real pressing need for our industry to get back, do you think? Because there is massive desire for it from fans, from the man in the street, the woman in the street out there, but also to get the ball rolling so some of these major, major fights can happen. Because I don't imagine you're talking about Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder here behind closed doors, or Vasyl Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez, or um, unless that event, you feel, do you know what? We might well do six million pay-per-views here because there's a real appetite for sport. What's mm. your take on that? Do you think some of the big fights could happen like that? The really big ones, the Whites Povetkin, the the Chisora Usics, the the you know all these the, the Fortuna against Luke Campbell could some of these fights go that way well first of all I'm in my daughter's bedroom so the trinkets behind me are all hers so there's nothing okay, well, I was right, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I mean with regard I think to begin just with, to clarify that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to be very sensible I think to get things moving we've got to keep it as simple as possible mm. and once we've got it as simple as possible and it works we can review what we're going to do and how we can build it okay now i would be very surprised if if um a major fight i mean a major one of the major fights you're talking about would take place behind closed doors because the promoter ultimately needs to add to his uh, money coming in from the tv companies and he needs to put spectators in there to do that to be able to pay the boxers and to hopefully and hopefully make a profit so he can run again in the future i would expect the initial number of tournaments promoter is going to lose heavily financially very heavily by having to by, by doing what they're doing but i think it's a it's a, it's a need so a must you've got to get we've got to get boxing back on board they're well aware of the issues um that are in place everyone i've spoken to they're well aware of the issues we're very keen and we are we you know we we, we don't want to we don't want to be get left behind compared to other sports um because there's tv slots and there's tv slots and if you lose some you might not get them back and uh, and i know we, we we as an industry and me as a regulator of the sport working on behalf of the board we need to assist everybody as soon as we, as much as we can to get them back to get them back going back to the big fights you're talking if you're talking about the big major fights you're talking about shipping in a load of people from overseas you're talking about a lot of officials coming here you're talking about other major things taking place with regard to what you need, etc. I think that's a long way off at the present time. Um, and I think you can only really do that on a, on a venue uh, like the O2 or something when you can actually have the space to do it properly. So I think the major fights now, I think you could start off with 10 rounders, 8 rounders, 10 rounders, an area championship. Maybe somewhere down the line, British championship, where we've got British people, people are from the same country. And we're not shipping anybody in from abroad. And I think that's the biggest problem. But don't forget, if you bring a foreigner in, you've got to isolate them for 14 days as government guidelines. So that's an expensive thing for the promoters anyway. So I would say, initially, it's all going to be British licensed boxers. I would have thought. And obviously, me. Yeah, and, and obviously in those, you don't need judges because the referee can officiate, can't so you? If you, do, if you do a non-championship fight, we have scoring referees in this country. Yeah. So that reduces the amount of officials. 
So maybe that's the one. Listen, I've, we've talked to the ref, we talked to um, promoters before. I know some people would like to go straight onto championships. I know some people are quite happy to do an uh, eight rounder or a ten rounder. Um, we'll do what we think is the right thing to do. And who knows? I mean, th things, as I said earlier, things are changing all the time, Gareth. Come next week, we could be in a position where the government say, ever so sorry, there's been a big spike, we're not doing anything. Or, or it's all gone down and we're happy to, re to reduce something. So, you know, we, don't, you know we, we can put things, in, well, we, want, we need to put things in place. So when we do start, we start. But you can't go, you can't speculate too much because we just don't know. What's your take on, on the UFC trying to do three events then on May the 9th, the 14th, sorry, May the 9th, uh, May the 13th, May the 17th in Flo Jacksonville, Florida, under the same precedence, um, under the same remit with, you know, behind closed doors, skeleton audience, skeleton crew, um, and testing all the, the fighters before they, before they, the same principles, basically. Yeah. What's your take about them doing it so quickly, three events in a row? Well, that's, that's something, I mean, not, you know, there's nothing to say that we couldn't have a show on a Saturday and a show on a Wednesday mm. if it's working right. I mean, I don't want to go, I wouldn't like to go in as quickly as that. But of course, you've got to, you, you, then you're talking about isolating quite a lot of boxers or, or athletes over a period of time. You know, we're talking about different, UFC, et cetera, is slightly different from us because it's all one group of people. We're dealing with a number of promoters. You know, we're not going to, I don't think promoters are going to share a show and stick everybody in the same hotel. No, that's true. Have you? That's not the conversation I'm having with people. On that point, have you spoken to the obvious promoters, yeah. Frank Warren and, and Eddie Hearn? Have you spoken to them at, at length? I've spoken to Frank Warren. I spoke to him this morning. Actually, I have a lot of communication with Frank. I haven't spoken to Eddie, but I've spoken to Frank Smith, who does all the yeah. working with him. So that obviously that gets back to Eddie, and they're all on board. You know, they they're all they're all appreciate what they've got to do, and whether they have to hire a floor of a hotel or hire a, ho a whole hotel etc they're willing to do it and um but you know we're not quite there yet um and you know we're only in april at the present time and, and a lot can change yeah hotel sounds a very good option because presumably boxers then can have their own dressing room their own room they come down from their room with their trainer etc etc and then presumably they have their fight and then they have to go well, I mean, it depends. We will have to, you know, bus. If, you know, if the hotel's away from wherever venue we use, you've got to bus them in. So they'll all be masked up, et cetera, and whatever, coming from their rooms. Uh, box, you know, we would have to have good facilities at the venues, et cetera, so pe pe people can be cleaned and whatever, have showers there, and then ship them back to the hotel. Um, so there won't be any hanging around for anybody, I wouldn't have thought. But, you know, these are things that, these are the final things you've got to think, uh, put in place. The most important things at the moment is the logistics of the testing. Can we do a show? What's the venue going to be like? Yeah. The little nitty gritty bits that come at the end always come at the end and they always get sorted. Final thing. Obviously, we're all big supporters of the NHS. It's kind of gathered momentum in the last few weeks. Tyson Fury's dead. And obviously, I think he was boxing the same time you were boxing pretty he much. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah a big, a Gypsy John Fury. And, you know, he's a big lump. I mean, he's got more dangerous mythologically as the years have gone by. And he is, a, he is the size of a barn door. And he's got a voice like a big old bear, hasn't he? Like crushed coal. And, and it always been fantastic with me, I've got to say. Um, um, is the prospect of him and this guy, Mickey Theo, boxing, people talk about as a, as a white collar fight, but they're going to fight for the NHS, raise money for the NHS. Is that something the boxing board would get involved with or is it or is it just too random and too radical for you to be involved no we won't get involved in that simple well on that note <laughs> uh, it's great to see you looking so well it's great that boxing's in such great hands and and such kind of um thoughtful considerate hands and that we do have an industry here that doesn't want to jump ahead of itself doesn't want to make anyone unsafe. We've got enough going on as it is. It's great to speak to you, Robert. I can't wait to see you live at an event. No, no problem, Adam. Thanks very much for contacting me and wish you well. And obviously everybody, all the doctors and NHS staff and, and, and key, key workers, you know, we owe a great deal of gratitude to all of you. Thanks very much and God bless you. Take care.